Mass Timber Design Tips, expert interviews, project highlights, all things Mass Timber. Timber Talk Tuesday starts now. Welcome back to another Timber Talk Tuesday. I'm Ricky McLean with Woodworks. Today's video is about fire stopping through penetrations in mass timber assemblies. I recently had the chance to talk with Sharon Halpert of Halpert Life Safety Consulting. She provides training, consulting, and inspection services for fire stopping details in all construction types. And she had some great insights to lend on how to look through the code and find requirements for fire stopping details, how to source a fire stopping detail. We talked quite a bit about the differences between testing and engineering judgments and some other tips and tricks to be aware of as you plan the fire stopping details for your mass timber projects. So I'll get right out of the way. Let's move to the conversation that I had with Sharon Halpert. All right, Sharon. Well, thank you for joining me today. I wanted to have a discussion with you about fire stopping in particular. So maybe the first question we can start with is when you're looking in the International Building Code project specific applications, when, what conditions, when and where do you need to provide a fire stopping detail? So as for the codes, everything in fire stop is going to be in chapter seven and except for special inspection of fire stop and all the special inspection elements land on chapter 17. But as for when you use fire stop, anytime you have a fire resistance rated assembly and you poke a hole in it, then you need to fire stop that hole to maintain the integrity of the fire resistance rating of that floor, wall, roof, what have you. The other time is when you connect to fire rated assemblies. So for example, when you have a floor and then you have a wall that comes up underneath, then you have a fire rated connection for the joint. And if there's any movement, you need to make sure that you have a dynamic system that's used as opposed to a static system. Right, right. Okay. So that really outlines when you need that fire stop detail. So the next obvious question would be, where do you go to find fire stopping details? Kind of what are the options out there for, for providing them that meets the needs of a specific project? So in traditional construction, most people are going to say, oh, you just find a UL listed detail. But mass timber is unique in that it's so new. There are very few tested and listed assemblies in UL. And there's also other third party test labs that can facilitate tests according to the ASTM standards that are required to meet the requirements of the code. So for example, for fire resistance rated joints, that ASTM standard is ASTM E1966. And for through penetrations, it's ASTM E814. And you mentioned a little bit ago that there aren't a ton of available um, tested systems. So that I think leaves you relying more on engineering judgment details. Maybe talk a little bit about engineering judgment details. How do you come up with them? What do you need to base them on? And what should designers and building officials be looking for when evaluating them? That's a really important question because if you're going to meet the requirements of the code, you have to meet the requirements of those test standards that we just discussed. Now there is one little element in the code that says or approved material. And that bears all the responsibility back to the building official to either approve or reject any material that will be used on a project. And that's a lot of responsibility so if you go to the building official and you want to convince them that you've got the right method to move forward on the project, you need to give them a certain level of confidence. So the International Fire Stop Council has guidelines for engineering judgments, and you can find them if you'd like to review them on their website. That's firestop.org. And they'll, if you search through there or if you can't find it when you search through, just reach out on their contact page and they'll send it to you directly. Um, but it's a great resource. And one of the key elements is that when you're designing a fire stop engineering judgment, you have to base it on tested and listed details. And that goes into play in a number of different scenarios. But when we look at mass timber, that becomes an element of there aren't very many tested and listed details. So again, the test labs, there's UL. They're the one that's most most people are aware of. Um, and they have a fabulous website that you can pull from as a resource. There are, however, other third-party test labs 
that you can use to actually test your Firestop applications. And so if you pulled from any of those tested and listed applications, then you'd be able to create an engineering judgment that would work for whatever scenario you have that's unique on that project. One of the things that tends to happen is the project runs into a problem and now they try and fix that problem with Firestop. So this is a true case for any type of construction. So if anybody wants to have a project where they know that the Firestop has a better chance of not running into those common problems, then they need to take a little bit of time to plan their project in relation to Firestop. So your plumber is gonna have a plan. They're gonna go in and they're gonna know at this area, they're gonna do this, 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 and this. They know the order of everything that's gonna happen. Yep. So my question to that plumber is, are you doing your Firestop yourself? If so, do you have that as a scheduled line item? Great, if you do. If you don't, maybe consider having that as a scheduled line item. And then also, you want to make sure that you have a plan, that you know the size of the annular space that you're creating for that metal pipe or that insulated pipe or that plastic pipe. And that before you make that hole, you know that it's going to have the annular space that you need to install the fire stop. And you can't plan that properly if you're not reviewing your fire stop systems and your engineering judgments. Right. And I think to your point of planning it out early is super important with mass timber, because oftentimes those holes will be drilled, planned out and drilled in the factory prior to them arriving on site. So you really need to be planning for these fire stop details while it's going through VD and C with the contractor coordinating things, you know, much in advance of anybody actually being on site. Uh, so that's where you want to make sure that the annular space is correct, for example, in the 3D model. So the holes drilled to the right size. So when it gets to site, the fire stop detail can be appropriately installed. And that's the thing that I love about mass timber is that you have this unique opportunity to plan everything a little bit better. Well, Sharon, I think this is a topic, fire stopping in general, that is far too often overlooked. And I would say especially so uh, in mass timber projects. So it's really helpful to have, have you share your insights on the topic with us today. Uh, thank you so much for having this conversation. It's my pleasure. Absolutely. Well, there you have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Sharon. The one thing I wanted to mention as well in closing is that on the Woodworks website, there is an inventory of fire-tested mass timber assemblies. And we have also added to that inventory fire-tested through penetration details, fire-stopping details. So you can check that out. As Sharon mentioned, there are a limited number of them right now, but there are some available, and you can access those free on our website to learn more about your options for fire-stopping details. Well, thank you so much for watching today's video. And until next time, we'll see you later.